welcome back there, chums, as I, Captain Steve. And yes, last time it mentioned about there's a flying creature in the desert. I know exactly which one this is. This is the big airborne snaky dude with the sacks underneath him that keeps him aloft. You have to shoot those. He comes down, you grab his wings, you climb up. This one is great fun. It can be a little bit tricky the first time you encounter it, jumping from your horse onto the creature. But yeah, this one is over in the desert, so we've got to go through the wooded area, out into the desert, and yeah, there's just this little area that you stand in, it comes in. So yeah, here we go. I really enjoy this one. So off we go. Tally fourth, lovely jubbly. We're going to go kill probably one of my favourite of encounters inside of Shadow of the Colossus. And I think there's only one or two Colossuses to go before we, we focus on the boss. So this is going to be fun. Awesome. So here we go, let's uh, lock on. Yep, it's through the wooded area, over there. You know what, we've been through the wooded area a few times, so I'm just going to speed this footage up for you, okay? So we have arrived unscathed from the gummy bears that live inside of that forest. There are no gummy bears, don't go looking for them. And let's head on down to here, but they're bouncing here, there and everywhere. We are the gummy bears! Yeah, sorry, I go off on little tangents sometimes. You, you may have gathered from other videos that I do on No Man's Sky if you have watched those. If you're not a No Man's Sky fan, you know, you see the open vastness of this. Well, amplify that by a million times and you've got No Man's Sky there. It's actually a really good game to escape reality. Anyway, we have a cutscene, people. I'll be quiet. Okay, so the eagle-eyed of you might have noticed a small edit in there where the cloud shifted for a second. Yeah, I died again. Um, so basically, I'd managed to get on him, stabbed him, and th then he, um, he sort of goes back into the ground. And as he's going back into the ground, I thought I'd be clever. And I thought I'd jump off of him and do a combat roll. Didn't work out as planned. Rather than a combat roll, I just sort of belly flopped the frickin' floor. You can't do a combat roll before you hit the floor in this game. Yeah, so I pancaked myself. Misadventure yet again, chums. So yeah, I've now chalked up three deaths so far on freaking easy mode. <laughs> but it is what it is. Okay, so here we go. The first thing you need to do is target the sacks on the underbelly with your bow and arrow. Now, sometimes you have to fire a little bit ahead of him. And you see that sort of stamina wheel in the bottom right-hand corner? Wait till that goes fully charged before you lease an arrow, or else it doesn't really puncture the actual underbellies of the sacks. But here we go. You know when I've done it, because hopefully we get the blue bar, and also we'll see some black sort of gunge popping out of these things, but here we go. Let's aim for that. Now this always reminds me, see those big white sacks? There you go. That's punched one. When I was a kid, I went into the woods, and this is in England, yeah, and I come across this spider, and it was bright white and its legs were really chunky and thick, and its abdomen was like a golf ball, actually in size and colour, that's the size it was. It looked like a freaking tarantula, and it spun a web. It was actually, so a lot of tarantulas only stick to the ground, they don't really climb, but this thing had a web. It was, seriously, size of a golf ball, just the abdomen, it was like freaking big. And I had like a net where it was going out butterfly catching. And so I knocked this spider out of its web, it fell on the floor, and I speared it with my... And it was still freaking moving with, with... It was one of those bamboo, really shit sort of butterfly nets that you can get. Weird, I've never seen a spider like it again since. You know, me being an adult now, I would have put it in a freaking jar or something and taken it to be freaking looked at. Because, uh, yeah, never have I seen a spider like It looked like a giant garden spider, like that had giganticism or something. That's the only thing that I can think of now that makes sense. Either that, or I imagine the whole freaking thing, which I don't think so. Bit of an odd one. Anyway, I'm going to climb up the wing of this thing. We're going to get up there, and we're going we're gonna to free f f f stabbing this guy. Yeah, heck yes. Stabby, stabby. 
Okay, there you go, there's another tale of my life, which uh, I do t tend to tell a few tales from my childhood and my life as I'm playing games. If you like this approach, maybe you might like to just watch No Man's Sky stuff just to chill out. You might not even like the game, but you might just like the banter. So yeah, tune in maybe. Um, if you're only joining us for no for the Shadow of the Colossus and you've got no interest in the other stuff, fine. But yeah, it'd be awesome to see a few new people jump onto No Man's Sky from watching Shadow of the Colossus. I mean, completely different games. Kind of. I mean, we've got giant sandworms now that look a little bit like this, to be fair, inside the game. You can't actually climb all over them and stab the heck out of them. You can't even shoot them. Um, you can sort of half scan them in a roundabout way, if that's your thing. But yeah, it's cataloging and exploring is No Man's Sky. This is a very different sort of game. But fuck, really cool. There's, I really wish there was some giant alien creatures like this in No Man's Sky, like megafauna. That's what it's lacking, I think. You know, these giant planets. I mean, what sci-fi film have you ever watched that hasn't had some sort of gigantic fauna in? You know, even the Star Wars ones where they, they go and fly into that meteorite and they think they're inside a cave. No, they're inside a monster's mouth. I'd love to see sort of megafauna of that sort of size frequenting the worlds of No Man's Sky. So this is where I died before. I thought I'd jump off before he went fully into the ground. Just stay on him until that happens to you and you face plant into the sand. Don't try and be some sort of Jedi ninja and jump off because you die. Um, or at least I did anyway. Yeah. I don't know whether you could call your horse and land on that. That would be freaking epic if you managed to pull that off. But no, I, I'm not that dexterous. Right, so now I've just got to ride around and hope that it re-emerges from the sand. So we're just going to keep an eye out. Also, if you're holding a pad that's got haptic feedback, it will rumble, or all the old PlayStation pads, will rumble when it re-emerges. And as soon as you feel that rumble, just look around and you should see him emerge from the sand. I say him, who knows what sort of genetics this thing has, or, yeah, gender it is. You know, look at it. Look at that freaking thing. You know, freaking awesome. That is so cool, isn't it? But yeah, these, these are all one-off creatures, which is another thing, isn't it? You know, you would have thought that for one of them to survive, there would be parents or offspring or a mate. Unless these are immortal type creatures like titans, then yeah, who knows. But freaking awesome. There you go, I'm going to shoot here. You can see all those other beams of light going up into the sky. They're all the other colossuses that I've killed. Freaking, it's insane, isn't it? And you know when you actually return back to the temple, you have all those sort of black shadows standing over you. There's one there for each of the different colossi. Now, in a lot of mythology, they say that, you know, when, when um, demons cross over, or the jinn, they're actually represented by smokeless fire, or they resemble black shadow people, or shadow entities. So this sort of plays into uh, quite a lot of sort of connotations against uh, many cultures that report on shadow pe people. So I'm wondering whether we're slowly getting possessed by the spirits that live with inside of these weird creatures. Heck yes, but we shall see. We shall see what unfolds. When I actually played this through on PlayStation 2, when you kill not this one, not the next one, but the one after, the voices say that's the last of the Colossi. Just one more thing stands in your way. Me and my brother thought, oh, we've done it now, we've completed it. And I think we downed tools. I don't think we took out the very, very end thing in-game. So I don't think we ever actually completed this. We just thought that it then goes open weldy and you can just explore and we didn't have no interest and we turned it off. So, yeah, I don't think I've ever killed the very end boss of this game or seen the ending to this game myself. I know my brother has now and he's unlocked all sorts of mad stuff like parachutes and gnarly swords and things. There you go, awesome. I'm going to just jump straight off my horse and land on him. There we go. Freaking awesome! Did you see that? That was pretty ace, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. Now I just gonna run down to the last flap and stab in the last flap, and I think this creature is done. I think it's gonna be toast once I get down to this one down here. I'm just running at the moment and just grabbing every now and again when I, I lose my footing. But yeah, let's get under here and let's stab there, and hopefully we're gonna get the death scene because this is the last one to be had now. So we go. We we'll wait till it gets full, and boom. Okay, that didn't do it. I'm going to have to do one more stab. Am I going to get to do it before he dives? There we go. Done!
Okay, so we're in the Tunnel of Light. I think we've only got two Colossi left before it says that all Colossi are dead. And then there's a boss that I neglected to actually fight last time. So this is heating up. It's getting interesting. And yeah, let's have a listen to what tips come next. Ah, this is the one, the bull in the china shop. The one that headbutts pillars while you're standing on them and knocks them over like leaning tower of Pisa's. Anyway, until next time, goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again. Well, thank you very much for watching. If you like what you see, please hit a like and a subscribe. And I'd like to say a massive great big thank you to all of my backers over on Patreon and over on YouTube membership. Thanking you, backers. And if you want to support this channel, just don't skip the adverts. Add Froze Revenue down my avenue. Or yeah, just stay with Captain Steve a little bit longer and hit something on this screen. There's merch here now too.